Majengo, east of Nairobi, one of the many shanty towns in the Kenyan capital, where deprivation and desperation go hand in hand. But there's another element here, radicalism. Dozens of local youth have been recruited from Majengo to join Al-Shabaab. Well, it's still unclear to what extent or how deeply rooted the terror menace is here in Majengo, but many privately acknowledge the existence of the problem. They say many are lured by promises of quick riches and a better life, and that some have died on the front line. Talking about it is risking retribution. So these three women would speak only on condition we did not show their faces. This is the only picture Amina Mohammed has of her son. Abdallah was just 14 when he left for Somalia. It was on a Monday morning when he left for school. He came back at 1 p.m., then left one hour later. He did not come home that evening. It wasn't unusual because usually he'd often go to my brother's place. But on Tuesday, when I called my brother, he told me Abdallah wasn't there. That's when I panicked. On Wednesday, I got a call from my other brother who also lives nearby. He then asked me if I heard that Abdallah had gone to Somalia. Abdallah called her later to say he was studying. He never came home. My nephew who lives nearby got a call from Somalia. He was told Abdallah was dead. Looking back now, there were signs their sons were being radicalized. He often scolded us whenever he found us watching TV. He'd even switch it off, telling us that TVs were worldly things. Most of the time, he would also keep to himself. They just never expected to lose them to a terrorist group. But Al Shabaab's lure is strong. For youth who have nothing, Talk of a $500 sign-up fee looks attractive. There are recruiters in Majengo, skilled in preying on likely targets. And then there's social media. This video shows a former computer student from Majengo. Known as Iman Ahmed, he's regarded as a leader among the Kenyans fighting in Somalia for Al-Shabaab. In this video, he's boasting about the deadly attack launched on Kenyan forces at El Ad in January. Kenya's borders remain porous, so recruits and hardened jihadists can come and go. One answer would be greater cooperation between parents here and police, but there's very little trust or confidence in government's offer of amnesty. Ibrahim Jibril's son returned in 2013 after two years in Somalia. He was killed a year later. I remember he came home at 8 p.m. We talked a little bit and he told me he was back for good, but that he feared for his life. You see, if we had guarantees, we'd try and tell them to come back home. As a mother, I would assure my son that nothing will happen to him, but that's not the case. For Kenyan authorities, it's deeply worrying to have what amounts to a terrorist recruitment center in the capital. And even one year on from Garissa, there's been no obvious success in shutting it down. Jin Keo, CCTV.